The gaming apocalypse. We've heard that statement made here a lot recently. We're even seeing some people trying to point out that gaming is dead. I don't really think it's going down that rabbit hole, but there is some reason for concern, at least for me as a gamer, that we're going to potentially be going into a few years of a downturn, um, a, a stagnancy in innovation and creativity, and just being artistic flexibility. Um, it just, to me, from what I see, what I read, what I hear, it's starting to just feel that single player games, once again, are becoming a point of contention for publishers and developers because they just really feel that the budgets have gotten out of control and that they just need to go and, and chase the flavor of the month I'm calling it. Starting there, the flavor of the month. Imagine chocolate ice cream being the absolute end all be all of ice creams. And everywhere you go, you just have different versions of chocolate ice cream that have something to make them different. But at the end of the day, it is still chocolate freaking ice cream. And it really does feel that the industry is going down this rabbit hole of being hyperbolically focused on games as a service. Now, recently we heard that Xbox is going to make their games multiplat, at least certain ones. That's not really a serious issue for me. I don't care if somebody on another platform, well, be it a Nintendo, PlayStation, PC, uh, a Samsung refrigerator, I don't care if they can play the games that I enjoy. What I care about is that the games I enjoy continue being developed and published and we don't go down this road as everything has to be a freaking games as a service because at the end of the day, let's face it, we've seen recently Helldivers 2, Power World, and a number of other double A service style games. I'm not going to call them a total games as a service, but let's just face it. These games have little to no narrative driven experience they are nothing but a mechanically driven experience that creates a very unique uh game mechanic that people are loving and they're all returning but we're also seeing once again pal world just like a month or two after its launch 80 percent of its player base decided to go move on to hell divers 2 or go back to the games that they were playing before pal world now the developer is perfectly fine with this but that's because literally all these people bought the game for like 30 bucks. He sold like millions and millions and millions of copies at 30 bucks. They made their money. So therefore the game is a success, but a two month success. Is that what we're going to have turn into for gaming where we're just going to have essentially these lackluster titles that are meant to grab your attention for two to three months until you move on to the next flavor of chocolate ice cream. Going back to Xbox and PlayStation, let's just start with Xbox. We saw Toys for Bob recently break off from Xbox. We were all excited that they were acquired during the ABK deal. We thought we were going to get the Spyros and, and the Crash Bandicoots and the stuff that we really love for Toys for Bob. But now that's a little bit of a point of uncertainty because Xbox is going to retain the rights for those IPs and Toys for Bob is obviously going to have to enter into some kind of a partnership for um, the to make those games still. And their last game, I'm pretty sure we had a discussion about it on TXR. They did point out that Toys for Bob was probably forced to create the, the Crash Battle game, which was basically a fighter game, a beat em up that really nobody was talking about. And also we've seen Call of Duty recently almost going down that service model style where you get the yearly iteration of Call of Duty, but you also have Call of Duty Warzone. It just really does start to feel that maybe, just maybe that there is going to be a, a not a large, but a portion of Xbox that is going to be hyperbolically focused like the rest of the industry as games as a service. Now that's bringing us to PlayStation. PlayStation is starting to go down the road of games as a service. We've already seen how Helldivers 2 really gave the, the platform a little bit of a bump when it came to a multiplayer game available on PlayStation. We've also seen and heard that PlayStation is putting a lot of time, money, and effort into crafting more games as a service style games. 
And we also saw them a few years ago purchase Bungie, which created Destiny 2 games as a service. And we're going to get in that in a second. But that's where it's starting to become absolutely concerning that even PlayStation, when it comes to single player games, is going to start doing what we're all looking at or what we're calling the safe blockbusters. Something that is connected to uh, big movies and, and entertainment pop culture stuff that's a sure bet to get people excited and it just really feels that the creativity the ingenuity that really created games like days gone and other titles that the previous regime during the ps4 era uh sean Layden, uh during his era during his tenure over there as the leadership of playstation there was games that they put a lot of money into and they created a single player experience, but he basically came out and said in an interview that they weren't meant to be blockbuster titles. They were there to feed the the um, the creative development and the ingenuity of the PlayStation brand, making them a very unique brand. But now, as we can see through Jim Ryan and also the focus of the new leadership over at PlayStation, that they are definitely wanting to go down this road of what is a sure bet. And that is because we've seen other titles like um, like coming back out of ABK. We saw a developer come out a few years ago and he was one of the developers for StarCraft 2 and he wanted to let everybody know that there was a mount skin in World of Warcraft that made more money than StarCraft 2 did a freaking game. This is what's scary is that there is more money in crafting skins and cosmetic items for games as a service than there is creating games it's actually a very scott a very scary thought to think about and it's a very hard pill to swallow now because of the huge amount of money that can be made in creating these cosmetic items and other monetization schemes in games as a service style games versus creating an outright single player experience we're going to probably start seeing a large swathe of publishers and developers starting to focus on crafting more games as a service style games in the hopes of striking it rich because again we're seeing developers break off like toys for bob hopefully they don't go that down that road and they stick with the pedigree and they do what they do best in creating games like spyro and crash bandicoot but we're also starting to see a lot of developers starting to fear for their jobs, uh, especially those over under the umbrella of Embracer Group and even PlayStation on how they just recently shut down a London studio. We're also starting to see layoffs over on Microsoft side. So across the entire gaming industry, all these developers are trying to justify their existence to their publishers. And that's where we're probably going to start seeing all these ideas for games as a service because of the money involved. But this is where their hopes of striking it rich also come on a, a double-edged sword in the fact that if by some chance these games don't work out, they're putting their own, the whole developer at risk uh, in the name of trying to strike it rich versus going out of business and bankrupt if by some chance these service games don't work out. And that's the funny part is there's like the chances of a service game becoming a Fortnite and apex legends and other service style games that literally live on the the tip of the tongue of the younger generation of gamer it it's very few and far between it's really hard to bottle lightning and and make it something that can be crafted very easily when it comes to games as a service now, speaking of a developer that's learning the hard way about deciding to go down and chase the almighty games as a service model, Bungie. I love how everybody touts this brand, Bungie, as being the end-all be-all for the Halo franchise and that they need to work on it again. And I say keep Bungie the hell away from Halo because I don't like what they've created in Destiny. They abandoned Halo to create Destiny. Destiny is still one of the very few games that actually sunsets a DLC. There is some monetization practices in Destiny that I'm pretty sure were crafted by being in bed with Activision and picking up their bad habits when they were owned by Bobby Kotick. And now we're starting to see them in bed with PlayStation and there's starting to be some strain and cracks starting to show on the Bungie side uh, that are very prevalent 
because it's starting to seem that the final shape is being talked about in certain chat rooms and certain articles that their next expansion, the final shape, is not selling as well as they thought they would. And now this is also starting to put some pressure and leaning on the success of their next service style game, Marathon. Um, that's where, again, we could potentially see Bungie get flipped upside down on its head and be totally unrecognizable if by some chance Marathon does not work out. And I've said it that they were put on notice by the new CEO or COO, whatever the hell he is at PlayStation, Mr. Hiroki Totoki, the so Sony's president and PlayStation chairman. And he just recently did an interview and gave investors a statement that went a little bit along the lines. I, inv I visited the Bungie Studios and had meetings with the management. I saw that employees working at the studios were highly motivated, showing great creativity, as well as an impressive knowledge of live services. I also felt that there was room for improvement from a business perspective with regard to areas such as the use of business expenses and assuming accountability for development timelines. I hope to continue the dialogue and come up with some good solutions. So obviously he is heavily invested in creating solutions on how to somehow get Bungie from basically going down this path of potentially hitting the proverbial iceberg with Marathon. This is why I am actually very concerned about the state of gaming as the way I want it. I want to be able to play the Indiana Jones and the other, like, I mean, like EA just recently came out and said that they weren't going to be focusing on like licensed IPs anymore. They wanted to wrap up what they had going on with Star Wars and some other IPs that they have already licensed out, but they did potentially cancel one Star Wars IP game that revolved around the Mandalorian apparently. Um, and that's where I don't want to see games like that disappear. I enjoyed playing RoboCop. I enjoyed playing the, the Terminator game. Uh, there's a number of licensed IP games out there that I enjoyed playing. I don't want to see those disappear. I also don't want to see like creativity for single player experiences just get completely trash canned for a sure bet. I want to be able to play really fun different style games like banishers if you haven't checked out banishers yet you need to really check this one out it's a very different concept of a game it revolves around a story a narrative plot line that is totally driven by your decisions and no it's not just like you know these hokey decisions i mean like some of the things you have to decide in this game really get you thinking and that's the creativity i want to see I just recently said it again on TXR. I would rather put 300 effing hours into an Assassin's Creed game like I did with Assassin's Creed Odyssey than I would on Power World. No offense to anybody who enjoyed Power World, but I'm sorry, throwing balls at animals and cooking them over a spit on a fire can only have so much fun to me before I get bored. Maybe it's the ADD, I don't know. But I just really need more substance to my games than just running around reading tablets or just having these just half-ass done experiences in the name of just game mechanics. Like, I, I still stand behind Days Gone, a PlayStation IP that has been completely abandoned at this point for sure bets when I really do believe Days Gone deserves another sequel. Now, could we potentially see AA studios decide to try to keep games, uh, single player style games alive? Hopefully, um, that's at least what I'm looking for, with, especially with Toys for Bob. I don't want to see um, s these AA studios also decide to go down the path of games as a service because games as a service, in my opinion, the market is way too saturated. And they're like people have already kind of like made their line in the sand. Mine is Elder Scrolls Online. Once you kind of like set yourself into a a games as a service style game and make it your home, it's really kind of hard to hopscotch from each one of them unless you get these titles like Power World and Hell Divers 2, where you just grind at them for two, three months and you move on to the next one. But then it just, like I said, then it starts just becoming like a, a games as a service cookie cutter printing mill. And that's where I just don't want to see 
single player games and, and the creativity just go away from the gaming industry um, because I mean then at that point I might as well just be going down to my local retro game store and really start investing in in like PlayStation 3 games and Xbox 360 games because you know we were all excited for the online networks from Xbox Live and the PlayStation Network but now it just feels like from the advent of online gaming things have really taken a back seat for the idea of creating a mount skin that's going to make more money than a game so guys i don't want to like take up any more of your time on this subject i'm actually very curious on what you think down below in the comments section do you agree with me do you disagree with me um do you kind of see some of the same things i see going on when it comes to what is going to potentially happen to gaming at least for the next couple of years and is it going to be at a point where triple a game development is going to be almost unrecognizable compared to what it's been in the past so please again let me know down below in the comments what you think also if you enjoyed today's content please like and subscribe all that fun stuff that youtube likes to see to help me grow in the algorithm and keep my channel growing as well also, please check out the end card on this video, uh, watch my latest video, check out the playlist, explore my channel. And this is where I, I've always said at the end of these, you know, play the games you love on the platform you prefer. But now it's starting to just kind of like, you know, do what you can to keep the games you love alive. You know, don't get mad that someone else is able to play it on another platform. Let's just keep our fingers crossed and our hopes high that we're not just going to go down this road where all of a sudden everybody's going to be trying to do games as a service because it's just easier, cheaper, and more cookie cutter like. Don't want to see it turn into that. So thank you again for watching, everybody. I always appreciate every single one of you taking time out of your day to come check out the content. And until next time, everybody, I am Centurion1307, and thank you for watching.